Now, I'm no vicar of Dolby. I don't rap regularly and I'm not likely to pop up in several Dolby locations on your screens every day. But I would like to invite and welcome you to worship today. While David and Zoe are enjoying a well-earned rest, we are coming to you with a great service with some very familiar faces, some great songs, and the great news that we will be able to worship in our church very, very soon. Please keep an eye on our website for information regarding our safe services and the booking facility to allow attendance for our eight and 10 o'clock services. We'll start our service today with a great hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. As we continue our service, perhaps you've been able to find the order of service on our website or use your worship packs that were delivered. But from 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, 
but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we humbly thank you for life and health and safety, for freedom to work, leisure to rest, and for all that is beautiful in creation and human life. But above all, we praise you for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for the gift of your spirit, and for the hope of sharing in your glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Romans, chapter 7, beginning at verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome back to church this week. It is our fourth week in our series in Romans. After we started hopping around Dolby to learn more about our identity, remember we tried to drive to Sydney to work out where we came from and we learnt that Jesus is our navigator and our guide. Last week I even went for some job interviews and we learnt that Jesus is the best job to, best, best boss to work for. This week, I thought I'd try my hand at painting or drawing and writing because I'm not a very good artist. And I'd love your help because I'd love you to tell me which is the best kind of portrait of me. I got a bit stuck. Oh, oh hi. good day, Zoe. Hey, David, how are you? Very well, thanks. What are you up to? Well, I was just telling our kids' church that we've been trying to work out more about our identity. Oh. And so I thought I'd try my hand at painting or drawing. Oh, beautiful mm. paintings. And I'd love oh, your... good. Thank you, David. You're very kind. I'd love your help because I've actually done four drawings of myself and I'm not quite sure which is the best representation of me. So can I tell you about them and you can tell me what you think, David? Yeah, I'd love to hear about your art. Right. All right, well, this first one describes me in terms of the people around me and my relationships, because I thought I'm a wife and a daughter and a sister and a mum and a friend and a teacher and an aunt and even a minister. Whoa, you're all those things. Yeah, yeah, keeps me pretty busy. Yeah. And then, oh, I want to show you this one first. Whoa. This one is what I look like in terms of my physical characteristics. Mm. Now, I've got freckles and fair skin and brun I'm a brunette. Mm -hmm. And apparently I've got a bit of a button nose, someone tells me. A cute button nose. Hazel eyes and curly hair. Mm. Mm. You have all of those things, yeah. that's very true, yeah. Then I got thinking about some of my personal characteristics hmm. and I, I think it's pretty fair to say I'm organized yes very organized I'm normally pretty kind mm -hmm. caring patient yep diligent 
Yep, all and of those things. Sometimes even funny. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, but I'm not actually quite finished because there's one last one. There's another picture? There is. And this is one I struggle with a bit because this is about the things I find tough in life or the things I struggle with. And sometimes I get angry and sometimes I'm definitely impatient mm. and sometimes I'm unkind and can be pretty temperamental. And sometimes I don't trust very well, I'm pretty doubting mm. and sometimes I struggle with my, my pride mm. and, and being, being humble. So yeah, I thought these aren't necessarily nice things but they are definitely things about me that are true. Mm. Hmm. So. David, what do you think? Which one is the best representation of me? Well, Zoe, these are excellent drawings and they're wonderful because they're all true. They yeah. all speak about you and who you are. Yeah. But the Bible tells us that, yeah, our sin is part of our nature. We have a sin nature inside of us. The Bible also tells us that we're capable of doing some wonderful things of being patient and organized and kind and caring. Mm -hmm. The Bible also tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So all of your features, your freckles, your curly hair, your fair skin, your hazel eyes, all of that is part of God's image, God shining through you. And the Bible also tells us that what we do does, in a way, define us. It is part of our identity, who we are. So yeah, you are a wife, you are a daughter, you are a sister, you're a mum, you're a friend, you're a teacher, you're all of those things. Mm -hmm. So really the most accurate picture of yourself is all of those things. But ultimately, you are who God says you are. You are a child of God wow. in Christ. Wow. Thanks, David. That's really good to know. So you don't think you could actually choose between any of these? No. Who you are is all of those things, plus who God says you are. <gasps> you are fearfully wondered and wonderfully made. Mm. You are his child. You are his new creation. Ah. That makes a lot of sense because I read in Romans that Paul tells us all of these things as well. Mm. It says God has fearfully and wonderfully made us yep. and we're the children of God. But he also talks about how he, even as a child of God, still struggles with the things God wants him to do and the things he wants to do, like being angry or prideful. Yeah, even yeah. someone as amazing as Paul still struggled daily with his sin nature. But fortunately, he had the Holy Spirit and Jesus' example to help him to become more like Jesus and live for God. So you're saying, David, we should rely on God to be our creator and our designer and to listen to how he wants us to be. Absolutely. We are a blank canvas and God wants to make us his masterpiece. He wants to shine through us and slowly grow us and mold us and shape us into the likeness of Jesus. Well, thank goodness for that because I'm a terrible artist. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. G'day everyone. As Kim has already mentioned, my family and I are currently on leave, but thankfully the Reverend David Roger Smith from our mission partner, Bush Church Aid, has offered to preach this morning from Luke chapter 15 and the story of the lost son. So I encourage you to grab a Bible and open up to that part of the Bible and enjoy the sermon. Thank you, David. There are basically three types of people in the world. We're going to meet them, and I'd like you to ask yourself just two questions. Which person am I most like, and why does it matter? This is probably my favourite Western, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Jesus told a story about the good, the bad, and the gracious. I'm going to retell the story and you ask yourself, which am I and why does it matter? I'm in chapter 15 of Luke's Gospel. 
And I wonder whether you know which people Jesus had the biggest problem with. The good, the bad or the ugly. It was the good. It was the religious leaders. They didn't like Jesus and they kept grumbling about him, mixing with people who select the box on the census form. No religion. You can see that just before our story in verses 1 and 2. And Jesus answers them with three stories. A farmer searching for a lost sheep, a woman searching for a lost coin, and the third story is about a man who had two sons. Here we go. The younger son fronts up to his father and asks him for his share of the family inheritance. This is awful. He doesn't want his father. He wants his money. And amazingly, the father goes along with it. The son gets what he wants and takes off for a distant country. You can guess what he does over there. He blows the lot on parties and prostitutes. When the money runs out, he's destitute and desperate. Jesus says, the son came to his senses. He sees that he sinned against God and against his father and he heads off back home, hoping that his father will have him back, not as a son, but as a hired hand on the farm. And what happens next is astonishing. While the younger son is still a long way off, the father sees him in the distance. Why do you think that is? He's been watching and waiting for his lost son. There's probably a father here who's done that. When this father sees his son, does he feel anger? No, he feels overwhelming compassion in the guts. He runs to his son, hugs him and kisses him. He clothes him in the best robe, a ring and shoes. He restores him to the status of a son. And there's a wonderful celebration. What reason does the father give? This son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. It's obvious who the father in the story represents. The heavenly father who welcomes back lost sinners who come to their senses and come back to God. The good, the bad and the gracious. With this story, Jesus has shown us God's heart and mission. God seeks the bad who are lost and know it. He forgives them and restores them to a right relationship with God, to the status of daughter and son. Are you lost and know it? Come to your senses and come home. Come back to the Father. Come back to the life that he always had for you. Come home. Writing 700 years before Jesus told this story, the prophet Isaiah foresees the Christian gospel. Listen to what he said. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. That is the perfect righteousness of Christ. So when the Father looks at his people, he doesn't see the filthy rags that we came home to him in, but the beautiful perfection of Jesus. But Jesus' story is also about the older son. He's incensed at his father's extravagant generosity towards his younger brother. The older son is the religious person who is angry with Jesus for lowering the bar, for letting scumbags into the kingdom. Remember, it's the angry religious leaders whom Jesus is telling the story to. The older brother refuses to come into the celebration. Look, he says to his father, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed you, yet you never rewarded me. Can you see yourself in the older brother? This is the self-righteous person. You're seeking to justify yourself before God. Your religious life is diligence and duty, not thankfulness and beauty. It's a good chance you're angry because God's not rewarding your diligence. Life hasn't gone the way you want. This is the good person who is lost but doesn't know it. 
the older brother could also represent the good person who is found. You've come back to God. You're clothed in his robe of righteousness, forgiven and restored as a son or daughter. But you've lost sight of grace, of Jesus. They've dropped down over the horizon. You're living off the afterglow of grace. And some unwelcome guests have moved in. Pride, self-pity, simmering anger, disappointment, even disillusionment with God. And there's very little concern for the lost. The irony in the story is that the bad person is saved and the good is lost. Jesus urges the good who are lost and found, come to your senses. Come back to God through me. Recover joy in God and his grace. Jesus is the perfect older brother. He not only celebrates when we come back to God, he makes the way back possible. He was the friend of sinners who died for sinners. From deep love, he took our place, suffered our punishment. That's how the Father can pardon us and adopt us into his family and still be just. Friends, give up on proud self-righteousness. The end of that road is failure. And God's judgment. Come to God to be forgiven. To be clothed in his righteousness. Live in the sunrise. Live every day under Jesus the sun. His light and love. Sunbake in his grace. Rely on his power. See your love and affection for him rekindled. And watch him grow in you. Real concern for the lost. The Father's heart for the lost beats within Bush Church aid. Many Australians are like the younger son, taking God's blessings and leaving behind God. The spiritually destitute, disillusioned, lost and a long way from home. And BCA will go any distance to reach them. That's the title of our centenary coffee table book, Never Too Far, Never Too Few. BCA started during the Spanish flu pandemic in 1919 and works in partnership with Anglican Diocese and other Christian organisations in every state and territory. Our vision? To reach Australia for Christ. Our mission field? Rural, regional and remote Australia. We have over 30 mission ministry families on the field as well as a team of energetic BCA nomads. As we've long done, we're still going house to house, farm to farm, as parish-based evangelists, still pioneering and leading healthy churches as ordained ministers, still working with young people and their families in churches and in schools, still serving and equipping Indigenous people as Aboriginal ministers and chaplains, still caring for people's needs in the name of Jesus. Could you see yourself doing one of those ministries with BCA's support? Long after the new cycle has moved on from the drought, bushfires and coronavirus, BCA won't have moved on. Our workers go in and stay for a minimum four years and they can be there a good deal longer. Kangaroo Island is Australia's third largest island and was devastated by the summer bushfires and now the virus. The Henley family have been there for six years and are now living in their own home. They're an important part of the community, serving in practical ways and leading the Anglican Church on the island. In Bluff Point, northwestern Australia, Brendan and Laura Hurley had a dilemma. What do you do when your family service has filled the church to capacity? Well, you move to the hall. But what do you do when the hall is overflowing and with many non-Christians coming who are inviting their friends? Well, early this year before COVID, they started an evening service which is growing. People were becoming Christians 
joining growth groups. Brendan had a large scripture class at the local primary school. You know what shocked him? How excited the kids are to learn the Bible. That's not all. The church play group had 90 to 100 people coming. What's happening in Bluff Point? God is working powerfully. And you know what? You can be a part of that through BCA. There are four ways you can do that and help us reach Australia for Christ. The first thing you can do is to get to know us. Have a good look around our website. See who's where, what they're doing, what God's doing. Watch some of their videos. Get inspired. Look at the ways that you can get involved. You can sign up for our quarterly magazine, The Real Australian. While you're on our website, go to our Queensland, Northern New South Wales regions page and sign up for our quarterly regional newsletter from the trenches. I always get very positive feedback from that newsletter. Get to know us. The second thing you can do is pray for our workers and the work. They need our ongoing prayers. You can sign up for our quarterly prayer notes and I know lots of people very much enjoy using these or you can download them from our website or you can sign up for our daily email prayer notes or use the Prayer Mate app or Facebook. The third way that you can help is by giving. It will help you to be generous and it will help the gospel survive and thrive in the bush. The BCA money box is an old favourite. Or if you're like me, you don't use or carry much cash. Uh, so how about becoming a monthly partner through our distance giving program? It's all done online and you choose the monthly amount, 10, 20, 50, $100. It's up to you and God. You can ask our regional office for a brochure or go to our website. And finally, how about going yourself? You could go out as a BCA nomad. You don't have to be grey or retired. Or maybe your church could put together a mission team to one of our locations. Or maybe you could go out with your work or profession as a teacher, doctor, nurse, diesel mechanic. You could be a great blessing to a local community and to the local church that's so often under-resourced in the bush. So four ways to get involved. You can get to know us, pray for us, if you can give, and even consider going. The good, the bad, and the gracious. Why not join us to reach Australia for Christ, to reach the good and the bad, with the gospel of grace. Well, thank you, David, for that sermon and for the update on the work of BCA. Today, we're taking up a retiring offering for BCA. So the details will appear on your screen and we really encourage you to give to the work of Bush Church Aid uh, across Australia, supporting missionaries in regional and remote parts of our incredible country and making sure that they too can know Jesus and make Jesus known. Over to you, Kim. Let us together affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God who made and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died and rose again and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit who calls, equips and, is, and sends out God's people and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith, the faith of the church. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now it's time for another hymn. This is Jesus Strong and Kind.
Joel chapter 2 verses 13 says this return to the Lord your God who is gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love let us now confess our sins to Almighty God Heavenly Father you have loved us with an everlasting love but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done we are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And God desires that none should perish, but that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Holy Lord, we come to you this morning aware of how we need you to guide and direct our thoughts and actions every day. Pray, Lord, that you can keep us on track when our personal wants and desires keep intruding into our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for your church throughout the world and those who, in spite of danger, are faithful in caring for your people. Especially we pray for Bishop Daniel and the people in South Sudan, giving thanks for his ministry there. We pray too in a cycle of prayer for Bishop Michael and the Diocese of North India, Bishop Stephen in Nigeria, Bishop Robert and the Episcopal Church of Atlanta. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks too for your faithful leaders reaching out to those who are in isolated communities. This morning we especially give thanks for the vision of the Bush Church Aid Team and David Roger Smith as they reach out to their widely scattered congregations. We pray too for the work of Mark Fairhurst and the team with CMS and give thanks for Bishop Cam as he carries the additional responsibility for the Bush Ministry Fund. We pray too for Bruce and Libby Hayes in Southeast Asia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the ministries given by the churches, school chaplains, RI leaders, and the crisis centre here in Dolby. We pray for the parish of Anala and the Anglican Care and Disability Centre at Nambour. 
We pray for all the parish churches in Dolby, especially giving thanks for the ministry of David and Zoe at um, St John's and St Margaret's and how David's ministry has reached more people through the use of technology. We give thanks, however, that we will soon be able to meet again physically. We pray for those who have to prepare for yet another new challenge. We ask for your continued blessing, Lord, on the ministry of David and Joe, praying too for good health and blessings for Ken and Julie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for peace in your world, for a healing of hurts and divisions. We ask for your protection for those who serve, for police and paramedics, and for world leaders as they make decisions which are both wise and compassionate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commit to your care those who are sick in body and mind for healing and strength. We pray for their families and friends and all who care for them. From our church family, we pray for Barbara, Bruce, Elsie, Rodney, Ellen, Margaret B, Wayne, Jim, Jenny, Errol, Alison, Henley, Reg, Bill and June, Oman and Olivia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as we say together the prayer that God has given us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the, name, in the power of your spirit and in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace equip us with everything good for doing his will, working in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. And our final hymn for this authentic service is I, I hear, Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day.